Hey guys, Eric Sue here. Welcome back to another episode of Healthy Living with Eric Sue. I've got a fun one today. I've got a special guest, so stay tuned. So the big mystery is this. How do average Joes and Janes who did not cheat and hire personal trainers and chefs who want to live fit and healthy, how do we achieve our health and fitness goals and live our healthiest life yet still have plenty of time to enjoy it? That's the million dollar question and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Eric Sue, and welcome to Healthy Living with Eric Sue Radio. Whoa, I'm so excited to announce the latest program from Goality. It's called Goality Raw. Unlike anything you have seen from Eric Sue, it's a free, educational members-only resource area containing his top trainings, tips, and strategies for health and fitness. Visit www.goality.com to get on the waiting list so you will know the official launch date. Get ahead of the pack and join the waiting list now. Hey guys, Eric Sue here. Welcome back to another episode of Healthy Living with Eric Sue. I've got an awesome guest with me today. Her name is Zena Turner, and I thought I'd give her a few seconds to introduce herself. So Zena, are you there? I am. Hi, Eric. I just thank you for having me on. I am a certified integrative nutrition health coach and wellness advocate. I teach corporate seminars. Um, I've partnered with FitSpot to lead wellness seminars for busy execs. I lead retreats. Next week, I'll be partnering with the team from Hit the Floor Fitness for a week-long wellness vacation. And I also do workshops. So. On November 4th, I'm going to be hosting a fall wellness workshop at the Conservation Foundation. So I guess in short, I help people live healthier lives. Excellent. Very good. And um, I brought her on today to talk about some things about fall since we're in the fall. And uh, we're going to be talking about some other stuff. But before all that, my audience loves to hear the answer to this question. And that is, what's one cool or unique fact about yourself, Zena? I am currently enhancing my certification through a hormone health course designed for integrative nutrition graduates. Um, it's gonna, it focuses on addressing hormone health and coaching clients to achieve better balance. Excellent. So it's just, um, yeah, I'm really excited to bring this new service to my clients. Very good. Oh, cool. And, and actually we'll be talking about a little bit more about the hormone stuff a little bit later. Um, the topic we chose today was simple tips on how to get healthier um, this fall without stress or overwhelm. So um, let's dive right into it. And um, how do you describe how to get into shape for the fall with your clients there? So fall gives us an opportunity to pause and refocus on everything that we'd like to achieve. It's a really good time to stop and reevaluate our intentions. Instead of waiting for New Year's, like setting goals now and making small progress on those goals. Fall is just a great time for that. But it's also a really taxing season. You know, getting back into schedules, the weather gets colder. So it's important to understand that there should be a balance. I like to remind my clients that the way that we eat, think, sleep, and move has a direct impact on our health. I mean, Wellness is a huge topic, but there's a great way to organize it so that it's manageable and applicable. When I think about fall, nourishment is probably the most important priority. The way we nourish our body is going to directly impact our health, our cells. I mean, we are what we eat at a cellular level. Now, today's food that we're eating, it's growing tomorrow's hair, skin, bones. I mean, literally everything is regenerating from the nutrients that we consume. So quality really matters. I mean, eating local, seasonal, and organic whenever possible. Some of the harvest foods would include sweet potatoes, squash, beets, carrots, radish, turnips, arugula, kale, <clears throat> lots of vegetables and especially root vegetables to add that additional grounding. Foods that are warming, lots of soups and stews. 
you know, just really ensuring that we have the proper micronutrient load. A lot of my clients aren't really aware of what micronutrients are. Um, so understanding that in fall, some of these, we tend, our bodies tend to be lacking some of these. And two of the major ones that we're lacking in the fall would be omega-3s and um, vitamin D. And these are these two micronutrients in particular are extremely important um, to get through the winter to keep us healthy. So just some natural sources where you can find omega-3 would be wild caught fish, salmon, walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds. And then same thing with vitamin D. I mean, studies show that like up to 50% of the population is deficient, even with adequate sun exposure. So finding natural ways to supplement your vitamin D in the winter is extremely important. Some great food sources for that would also be salmon, cod liver oil, grass-fed beef is a great one, grass-fed liver, I mean, grass-fed beef liver, um, eggs, dairy. So just ensuring that we're getting the proper nutrition in fall can be extremely helpful to staying healthy. All right, Zena, that was really good information. I really uh, think that uh, our audience is going to get a lot of information and value out of that. Um, I just wanted to also make sure that we touched on uh, the other um, piece here, which is like the hormones and how that plays a role um, for men and women this fall. Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that there that many of your common concerns or health problems are tied to hormonal imbalance. Um, things like difficulty losing weight, adrenal fatigue, which is that feeling where you're like completely wired and but you're wired and tired, I guess, mm -hmm. but you can't sleep, you know, with thyroid disorders, um, a lot of skin issues, low libido, mood swings, all of these things are tied to hormonal imbalance. And a lot of times um, people think about hormonal imbalance as a women's issue, but a lot of men have have hormonal imbalance as well. And um, it just can wreak havoc on their health. Zena, can you give us an example of of what you're talking about with regards to how hormones affect uh, women or men? Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, um, testosterone levels for men, as they age, they tend to be low and their cholesterol goes up. So it causes these dual conditions. Um Usually, if you have a hormone imbalance, there's a good chance that it's going to throw off other hormones. And it will literally like wreak havoc with your health. So there, there are a lot of steps that you can take. Um, obviously, if you're suffering from any of these conditions, going to your doctor first and getting blood work and understanding like what your levels are. But then you know, what do you do when you leave there and you know, oh, yeah, my cholesterol's high, so how do I take care of this? So it's it's a process, and it's definitely not something that's going to happen overnight, but it starts with, again, with nutrition. First, you know, understanding macronutrients, how to, how to build a macronutrient plate and how to eat, understanding what foods – actually help with hormone balancing with yeah with hormone balancing um and a lot of time hormone balance is due to micronutrient deficiencies Zena, is there anything that uh, you could uh advise what we should be doing more of yeah, uh, absolutely so um some Foods that are beneficial to your hormone health include protein, you know, having protein at every meal, clean protein, um, things like grass-fed meats, wild-caught fish, pasture-raised chicken, 
organic eggs, organic, organic lentils and beans, um, incorporating healthy fats into your diet also is vital because hormones are created from fatty acids. So if you're not consuming enough of the right healthy fat, you're not going to be able to create hormones. In short, that, I guess that's putting it mm -hmm. quite simply. But, you know, adding things like avocado, olive oil, coconut oil, coconut milk, um, grass-fed ghee or butter, nuts uh, um, nut and seed butters, all of those things are just really important. A lot of people are afraid to eat carbs. They're afraid to eat fats. And those are really important to your health. Excellent. Very good. Um, Zina, did you brought up a point about um, people not eating certain foods. Um, and, and it's it's maybe due to like, uh, uh, what is it, um, paleo diet or um, keto, right? Keto diets, I think it's called. Yes. Um, and, and is is there, should there, sh I don't know, maybe they shouldn't be concerned, but maybe they should be concerned. Is, is there an issue with uh, following them, those two particularly? Because there might be a lot of people doing those. Well, actually, so the paleo diet and the keto diet are, when you have a severe hormone imbalance, those are actually two of the recommended diets, like where to start. So starting with um, a keto diet is a is actually a pretty good place to start because of um, like sugar mm. or I mean insulin resistance. And so, okay, let's take diabetes, for example. That is largely due to hormones. And people that have that aren't able to process carbs correctly. So, start, you know, and working with your doctor, a dietitian, or your health coach are all really important if you've been diagnosed with something that large. Um, but in general, um, those the paleo diet and the keto diet are a really good place to start. Now, if you don't have a huge health issue, but you're just kind of like trying to maintain your health and your wellness, then eating long-term paleo style and not having carbs is really, or keto is really not going to be overall health beneficial. Mm. But I mean, I don't like to tell people how to eat. So if that diet is working for you, then it's good. But just keeping in mind that our brains need fat to fat and carbs for energy and to process and to think. So if we want a sharper brain, incorporating a full balanced diet, our muscles need carbs to store glycogen to repair their tissue. So that is also really important for the long term. Um, really understanding that it's a it's wellness is a balance. Yeah. You know, uh, Zina, this is just popped in my head here. Um, and, and speaking of balance, I don't know if, if this is how you see it. Um, if we have to resort to something like paleo or um, keto, uh, for example, if we have to resort to those two, and there might be other ones too, um, doesn't that just signal that we're not in balance? Because those in itself are not a balanced eating plan. Would you uh, Absolutely. agree or disagree? No, I'd agree. You're, you're right on there. I mean, there are hundreds of dietary theories out there. And why is it that you can go to a bookstore and there is a different diet? How many books are there on diets? There are so many different ways to eat. And some people swear by them and others are like, no, that didn't work for me. I mean, and the answer to that is bio-individuality. Hmm. Every person is individual and not every food is going to be nourishing to every person. Mm. So take a tomato, for example, it has a huge list like of fiber and impressive nutrient list. And it's a really healthy and nourishing food. But yet some people will eat a tomato and they'll break out and rash and mm. 
it's inflammatory, it's a nightshade. Mm. So not every food is going to be nourishing to every person, just like not every diet is going to work for each person. So really working to find what works for you. Mm. And the best way to start with that is just to get a basic understanding of nutrition. Mm. So those macronutrients, how much, how, how to build a plate with the proper amount of protein, healthy fat, your dark green vegetables and carbs, understanding those in the right amounts, right portions, and just kind of seeing how you feel after the food that you eat. Mm. I'm, I'm curious to know here, Zina, and I'm going to try to really pick your brain here and, and uh, your education experience and knowledge here. Um, would there be a baseline that you would start people off of? I know you. there's so many baselines to, to create because of the individual um, people out there. It's, it, would there be one, though, uh, if, if there was well, a baseline to, to start at? When I start working with a new client, I first you know do a health history to understand where they're coming from. But then I also look at what their goals are. So everybody's goals are different. If your goal is to have more energy, I like to try to incorporate in foods that are going to help you have more energy. So like rather than reaching for caffeine, what are some alternatives to caffeine? You know, like maybe the maca root or, mm. you know, there are a lot of foods that are going to build your energy. If weight loss is a goal, then, you know, where do we start with that? Look, looking at how you know, are you properly hydrated and then building in all of the different little pieces as you go Because you know, when you're, when you're trying to lose weight, the, it's easier to add in a behavior like mm. adding water, a liter of water to your diet every single day, mm. um, rather than taking something away. Mm. So each client is going to be very different and there's not really a baseline for where to start. I mean, I guess baseline would just be understanding proper nutrition and then proper wellness. Like what does it take to have wellness? It's four main pieces, you know, having proper fuel, having yeah. movement and exercise and then restoration. That that piece is huge because a lot of people don't get enough sleep. They don't take the time to restore. They don't do any sort of self care. They sort of put themselves last. Mm, yeah. So, no, it that, totally makes sense. That piece is really important. Yeah. You know, as, as and I, then the mindfulness piece too. I have to get that in there. Sure. That no, no, mindfulness absolutely. Piece, that mindfulness piece is huge. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, um, but but just real quick here, the, it, as I, as you were saying uh, your words of wisdom there, um, as I think about it. Um, there are thousands, if not more than that, um, diet ideas, theories, suggestions, or whatever, right? Um, and, and as I think about it, everyone's so individual and different to some degree that it would be hard to kind of set a formula slash uh, baseline that fits everyone. Yeah. Is, is that kind of what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. It, it just depends on what your health history is, like where you are today, where you've been and where you want to go. So what are your goals? And then kind of working from there to figure out which foods do I need? What what nourishes me? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and trying there. There's nothing wrong with trying out the the different diets to see if it works for you. I mean, mm -hmm. I've tried out hundreds of them myself like mm -hmm. over the last 10 years I you know I've tried this different you know a new diet comes out you read the book and you're like mm -hmm. how does this work and does this work and you think about the theory and you mm -hmm. test it out like it's yeah we got to set up a new podcast just about those diets <laughs> yeah. and your experience maybe <laughs> oh, all right that'd be great <laughs> that'd be interesting actually um but you know what this this has been uh, very informative helpful and um and, and I, I know we can continue talking about these uh, issues um, and, and perhaps we can do another episode in the future about them. I, I think I would like that. Um, what are some ways people can get a hold of you and get in touch? 
So my website is honeyandhappiness.com and there are several buttons there to get a hold of me. Um has my phone number, email and everything. My email is Xenia, Z-I-N-A at honeyandhappiness.com. Excellent. Very good. I um, want to say thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day uh, to share this information with everyone. I know they um, will get a lot of value. Um, if anything, go back and rewind it. Um, several minutes of this to um, understand truly what we're talking about. And uh, please reach out to Zena if um, you guys want some more help. And I uh, really appreciate it, Zena, for your time. Eric, thank you so much. I really honor the work that you do. It's great that you're putting all of this information out there. Sure, no problem. I will let you go, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening. It means a lot to me. Remember to subscribe and leave feedback for me. Did you know you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Eric W. Sue Trainer? I have unique content there, and it would be cool to connect with you there. Finally, share or tag this episode with your friends. Sharing is caring. Okay, catch you on the next episode.